There must be a big demand for these oranges. These many wouldn't be produced unless the farmer knew that he could get a good price for his product. The price system is the magic of the marketplace. It tells the farmer or the factory what is in high demand and gives them an incentive to produce it. The stock market is similar. The constant supply and demand of shares in companies puts a price on every company every second of the trading day. But what do you do when there is no existing market and therefore no price for the securities? How do you match buyers with sellers when the price is unknown? Well, then someone has to create the market and help to discover the initial prices. That someone is more than likely an investment bank. Few understand what investment banks do since they don't regularly interact with the public. Well, they make a lot of money, so we just look at their staggering profits and assume that they must be some sort of parasite. But they're not parasites, they're actually diplomats, and without them, stock markets could not exist. When a business has been successful enough to go public, to attract investors and offer an IPO or initial public offering, a mispricing can cost the buyer or the seller hundreds of millions of dollars. And if one side or both think they might be taken advantage of, the deal is off and everyone suffers. This is where the investment bank steps in, as a trusted intermediary with a long track record of trust. And trust is the coin of the realm. Both the company that is trying to raise money and potential buyers of its stock share valuable information about their interests and price expectations with the bank. Based on this information, the bank creates a very temporary property right from which it creates its profit margins. The property right is invisible, based solely on the bank's knowledge, and the moment that knowledge is shared in the market, the property right disappears. The bank has suggested a price that it believes gives both sides a competitive advantage and it puts its own reputation at stake by underwriting the issuance. If it gets it wrong and no buyers appear, the bank will pay for its own failure. Investment banking gained momentum back in the 17th century when the Dutch established global trade and had to find ways to establish trust between strangers and foreigners. Today, wherever market actors need a go-between to negotiate understanding between rivalrous powers the investment bank is an important partner, not the least when it comes to really contentious actions like issuing new shares that dilute the stakes of existing shareholders. As The Economist Robert Schiller explains in a critical book about today's financial markets, in the corporate world, investment bankers are, in the final analysis, keepers of the peace and promoters of progress. Hey, check out these other great videos from Free to Choose Network. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get updated on episodes of New and Improved with me, Johan Norberg.